Welcome to Capital One Bowl Media. Welcome to the Bahamas Bowl. As part of Capital One Bowl Week, I'm partial, but I would say it's the best part of Capital One Bowl Week. Normally at this time, I tell you about the weather. It's perfect. It's the Bahamas. <laughs> it's UAB. It's Ohio. A pair of eight and four squads from Thomas A. Robinson Stadium here in Nassau. The Bahamas and that smile on Desmond Howard's face. <laughs> that's been there ever since he touched down. I'm Steve Levy along at Desmond Howard. Got to get game day to Nassau next year. Man. Oh, Steve, I've been texting Lee Fitting since <laughs> I landed. You kidding me? We can feel this stadium, man. I got to get us down here. Imagine Coach Corso at Atlantis. He would be huge down here. That's a party I want to go to. <laughs> UAB, what a story the Blazers are. If you haven't heard about it, you better be familiar. You have to go back to December 2nd, 2014. Their president decides to cut the football program. The same president, six months later, decides to reverse it, bring back football. And this past September, they set a record attendance crowd, a blowout victory, 38-7, to and have been on their way and are bowl eligible. They are a remarkable story. Man, just a fascinating story, Steve. I mean, you look at what took place in 2014, and we always talk about teams who may turn the season around from one year to the next. They didn't have a season in 2016. These coaches, Bill Clark, his staff, tremendous job getting these guys to buy in, and they've been rewarded with the Bahamas Bowl trip. Specifically, the 15 players who yeah. have stuck with the program going through two years of no football to getting here to NASA. Laura Rutledge is a veteran of past Bahama Bowls, and she joins us now from field level. And Laura, let's just say expectations were not high at the start of the season. Yeah, that's an honor, too, being a veteran of the Bahamas Bowl. But by the way, you're right. Expectations were low. And if you've been walking around the Atlantis, you've seen a lot of these shirts on UAB people. It says number 130 on the front, and that's an ode to all the preseason publications that picked UAB to finish absolute last in college football. These players, Shaq Jones telling me they actually want to thank all of them on the back it says appropriately they don't know they want to thank those doubters because everyone who thought oh it's just nice to have UAB back in football did not expect them to win the way that they have that's lit an even brighter fire under all of these kids and guys they're ready to make history that's been their mantra and they're sticking by it today certainly as well Laura, they will be up against it against a high-powered Ohio offense. This is a Bobcat squad that scores nearly 40 points every game. They've already set a school record for points in the season. Yeah, and it starts right there with that guy, right? Nathan Rourke. He's a Canadian kid, tough, loves to run the ball, dual threat quarterback, 21 rushing touchdowns on the season. Then A.J. Olet, he's the workhorse in the backfield. Number 45 brings a lot of power and physicality. And then Dorian Brown, he's just as physical, but he's a little more shifty than Olet. So they have a very explosive, great running attack that they're going to just be persistent, running the ball over and over again until the defense makes a mistake. And Desmond, you see Frank Solich, she's the recognizable name. You know him from obviously the days in Nebraska, but in his 13th season here at Ohio, 72 years and still going strong, highly motivated. And then on the other end is, is got to be the story, what Bill Clark has done. And Bill Clark was here in 2014. He has seen this through. Yeah. to go from, hey, no football program to we're in a bowl game. Not just any bowl game, we're in the Bahamas Bowl. We are set to kick it away. Julian Ross and Kylan Nelson are back deep for Ohio. Ohio in the white. And UAB will kick it away from the 35-yard line. And Nick Vogel puts it in the air, and it goes out of the end zone. Now we'll get a look at that Ohio offense. You touched on Nathan Rourke. I and mean, we had to double check the numbers on him. You see 21 touchdowns. Wait a second, does that include his passing? No, no, no. That's just <laughs> rushing touchdowns. Yeah, and that's very, a very impressive number. He leads all quarterbacks in that particular category. And, you know, he'll throw the ball, too. He protects the ball very well. He's a tough guy. He understands the offense and what the offensive coordinator, Tim Alvin, is trying to get him to do. Work in his backfield will have their star running back the redshirt junior from covington ohio that's aj Olette. and on first down and 10 the ball out at the 25 here's your first play from scrimmage at the fourth annual bahamas bowl here in nassau and on first down and 10 it will be Olette right up the middle picks up a good gain he's stopped by tevin cruz that will not be the last time we say cruz name this afternoon no it will not be Tevin Cruz is one of the vocal leaders on this team very emotional guy he gets the defense going we will definitely mention his name a lot today 
That's a great gain on first down. Take seven at any point. So here's second down and three. Two tight ends are in for Ohio. The Ohio, they, they love to go 12 personnel, one running back, and two tight ends, but they do a lot of window dressing, shifting, motions. Work under center, hands it to Poppy White, the wide receiver. One of the explosive players, they want to get the ball in his hands at any time. Broderick and Thomas forced him out, but not until he had the first down. Yeah, Poppy White is one of the impact players to watch in today's matchup. He is their most explosive guy, an incredible athlete at five foot nine inches. They love to get the ball in his hands in space, but he's a guy too that they trust with those 50-50 balls because he knows how to jump up and high point the ball. On first down and 10 on this opening drive. Ball spotted just shy of the 40-yard line. And here's Rook to throw. Lost it down the left sideline, and it is knocked away. It was intended for Poppy White. Darius Williams had the coverage, and that will be the key matchup of the day. Darius Williams, a flat-out stud in that secondary. Yeah, keep an eye on that matchup right there. Number one for UAB, Darius Williams against number four, Poppy White. Darius Williams is a guy who has next-level talent. NFL scouts have taken multiple trips down to Birmingham to look at this young man. Watch him today. He has great cover skills, but what he's added to his game this season, he's very, very physical, especially for a cornerback who's 5'10". I thought Poppy was the one playing defense on that last <laughs> pass play. Make sure there wasn't an interception by Williams. On second down and 10, here's Rourke, the quarterback. He can run, and he can cross midfield as well. He's got first down yardage. Roderick Thomas brought him down, but not until he gained 13. And that's what this offense brings with the uh, OC, Tim Alvin. They're going to make you defend all the whole field, east, west, north, and south, sideline to sideline, because Nathan Rourke is a guy who he's not going to just keep the ball into the belly of the running back. He's going to pull it and gain positive yards just like he did on that play right there, Steve. So terrific opening drive here now for Ohio. First down and 10, they're across midfield and into Blazers territory. Out of the shotgun now is Rourke. Little shovel pass, off for Ouellette, and they're gonna throw it, it's Andrew Meyer throwing, throws it back to the quarterback, Nathan Rourke. They have shown that play before for a touchdown, and there it's at least effective enough to move the chains in the first down. Yes, they have. They have a little razzle-dazzle in their, in their playbook, and they're gonna bring it out in this Bahamas Bowl. I tell you what, Marshawn Diggs, number two, the defensive back for UAB, he got lost on the play. If he was, was alert and paying attention he actually could have picked that ball off but he was going upfield ch chasing nobody on that play that's a gate of 12 on the play here's Rourke back out of the shotgun with the ball now at the 33 good pocket for him. blitz pressure comes late maybe trying to go back shoulder to poppy white or some miscommunication between the quarterback and receiver yeah he was looking at poppy White the whole way, and Poppy, right, Poppy White ran a stop and go. He tried to go back shoulder, but he didn't give Poppy White a chance with that throw. It was uh, well underthrown. And by the way, we should point out, Poppy is not a nickname. That's his actual name. We believe that is on his passport. Exactly. Which is such a big deal about coming to the Bahamas. The exactly. passport stories yes, are sir. endless. Oh, yeah. We, we'll tell you about them as we, as we go on. Your second half is that. Two receivers top of the screen. Rourke's looking that way, and it's a quarterback draw. He'll keep it, take off, and stays on his feet. Nathan Rourke has plenty of first down yardage there. Another big game for the quarterback. He rips off 18. And when Nathan Rourke is most dangerous is when he's going north and south. I mean, this young man is six foot four, 220 pounds, and when you come up to hit him, you have a business decision to make. He's not afraid to lower his shoulder and try to run through you. A bad business decision. Bad business decision. You want to take him on. Under yes, 12 sir. to play. An impressive opening drive here by Ohio. First down and 10. Well inside the red zone at the 15 now. Olette is the single setback behind Nathan Rourke. You can tell they've got the defense guessing already. Oh, yeah. They got them on their heels right now. And the one thing about both offenses, they love to, work, to run their quarterbacks in the red zone. Here, Rock off the play fake. Low throw to Andrew Meyer. He's able to make the catch, though, at the 12-yard line. That was, that was a great job of making an adjustment to make that catch by Meyer because another underthrown ball by Rourke. He's not in the rhythm throwing the ball, but he's in a tremendous rhythm running the ball at, at this point. 
Second down and eight out of the 13. See the Bobcats are still lined up right now with 12 personnel to keep uh, the Blazers guessing, doing a lot of shifting. You see how the Blazers' defense, they have to move with the tight ends. And this gives Rourke an idea of what the, the, the front is and what coverage they're in, too. Gives it to all that for the short gain that time. Fitzgerald Mofor made the stop. Now, looking at this um, Ohio Bobcats offense, they're 10th, 10th nationally in red zone offense. They've scored on 54 of 59 trips to the red zone. That's 92%. And of those 54 scores, 47 touchdowns. Very impressive, that six best in the country. Julian Ross has checked in, replacing A.J. Louet. On third down and six now. From the 12. Here's Rourke. Pocket breaks down, maybe a face mask. As Rourke is taken down at the 20-yard line. Anthony Rush brought him down. There is a flag. We'll check the marker. Looked like a face mask. I believe it is. And, uh, yeah. Grafting the face mask. Defense number 97. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic. First down. Charles Lamartina is our referee today. Stacy Keeley got caught on the face mask. So we don't have to worry about that Anthony Rush sack. <laughs> Under 10 here to play now in this first quarter. Ross stays in the game, the true freshman from Kansas City. He's the single setback now behind Roar. After the markers picked up, ball spotted just outside the five. Loading the box. Let's see if they bring some pressure here. Rook's going to hand it off. Here's Julian Ross for a yard or two. Second down and goal. I'm surprised they ran Julian Ross in between the tackles like that. I mean, Julian Ross is a guy who's five foot nine, 185 pounds. He's more of a shifty, open field type of runner. That running play right there is more suited for a guy like AJ Olette. Second down and goal from the four. Olette is back in there now, Desi. Play fake, work to throw. End zone at the goal line and it's knocked away. And there is a flag down. D.A. Williams looked like excellent coverage on Andrew Meyer. That's nine on nine. And it looked like if he could have hung on to that, it would have been six. Yeah, it looked like it. I think Holding. it was a... Defense number nine. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic, first down. Cover right. Coverage a little too good. <laughs> now we know why the coverage was, was so great on that play. Yeah, Meyer did a little hesitation. He's breaking in, and you can see as D.A. Williams just holds on to Meyer's jersey. That's an easy call for the officials. So a couple of penalties here, bailing out Ohio as their drivers appeared to stall inside the red zone. But they have new life now after this latest penalty. First down and goal. This is the 11th play of the drive. The ball to two. Let's see if they give it to Olet. Rourke is under center. Fakes. And will throw it away. Wide open. D.L. Knock. The play fake freezes everyone, and it's D.L. Knock. That was just a great play call. Excellent execution. I mean, D.L. Knock came from the right side all the way across behind the line to the left side. He got lost in the traffic. Not a blazer in sight. They didn't even see Dio not coming. Dio not. How about that? That's his first touchdown of the season. You don't, you don't, you don't use his name often. You don't call his name often in these games. So but pretty... for, for a football guy, Dio knock. Dio knock is a really, that's a really good, good name. football name. I agree. Looks back good on the back of the jersey. Louis Zervos is perfect on the extra point. Dio knock. Good time for his first touchdown of the season. And here in Nassau, Ohio, on the board, an impressive first drive. The Bahamas Bowl, brought to you by the Islands of the Bahamas. Your island is calling. All the money in the world, coming soon. And Chevy, 
Chevy has earned J.D. Power Dependability Awards for cars, trucks, and SUVs. I think I can see your hotel room here, Dad. You leave the light on in the living room, Dad? <laughs> Unfortunately, that was a rush. I didn't want you guys to leave me. <laughs> hey, we're on island time here. That's true. And we'll get into the time and the scoring in just a little bit. Two-yard pass play. That could not have gone any better for Ohio. 11 plays, 75-yard drive. They take over six minutes off the clock and take the seven to nothing lead. And, and a touchdown to DL not very unsuspecting. And that's, you know, that's what you get in these bowl games, too, because you have so much time to, to add little wrinkles and uh, things of that nature to your, your offense and your defense, too. So I'm, I'm sure the Blazers were not expecting DL not to sneak behind the offensive line and pop <laughs> out on the other side and catch that ball for a touchdown. They didn't have a lot of film on him. Exactly, right. <laughs> Here's Michael Farkas to kick it away. And Demetrius Davis will look to return it off the short kick. It's a good return. He's out to the 34-yard line. And some good starting field position now for the Blazers of UAB and their starting quarterback, A.J. Erdley. A.J. Early comes into this game, Steve, with 13 rushing touchdowns, 16 passing touchdowns, and only four interceptions. They really trust Early with the offense because he's a guy who does a lot of film study, big kid at six foot four, runs the ball extremely well, but they know he's going to protect the ball, which is the key, which is key in this game today. On first down and ten, the Blazers come out throwing and completing, able to hook up with Logan Scott for the good gain on first down, bring up a second down and short. You can see next to second down on your screen and next to the 822 on the game clock, usually there would be a red number there, the play clock. Yes. I mentioned we're on Bahamas time. Apparently yeah. both play clocks are malfunctioning right now. And so some of the emphasis, and Spencer Brown is the ball carrier. He comes up short of the first down. Javon Hagen made the stop. So apparently one play clock works, but that wouldn't be fair to anyone. Right, that's true. So they turned off the other play clock. Okay. And the back judge, Jim Seymour, will have a little extra responsibility today. It'll be his job to signal raising his hand in the air yes. when there are 10 seconds left on the play clock. He will extend his arm out to the right when there are five seconds okay. and drop his hand at zero. And we've been told they will be rather lenient for trying to get a timeout if the play clock should expire, since they're just keeping it on the field and no one can really see it. Here's Spencer Brown on third down and two. He's got first down yardage, and we have Laura Rutledge. Yeah, you mentioned being lenient. The officials told me, Steve, they will be so lenient, they're going to be on island time as well. They specifically <laughs> said that. And they said that really, they, they want to make sure this doesn't affect the game. They want to stay out of the way as much as possible. One thing to watch, the referee is counting to the quarterback to allow him how much time he has there on the field. Here's Erdley scrambling out of trouble. Crosses midfield, took a pretty good hit at the 48-yard line by Evan Crouch. All I know is play clock or no play clock, the show must go on. Yeah. Yes. But as a quarterback, I mean, you know, sitting next to Greasy all the time, he says right. that's the first thing in his life he's been told. Yeah. You get to the line, you check the play clock. Oh, so there's no have, doubt about it. You have that. to eliminate that step where you yeah. wind up searching for it and you'll find nothing, and that could cost you time as well. Yeah, you have to wonder how that's going to affect these quarterbacks throughout the game, too. You get in a rhythm, you get a habit of exactly. looking for it, and then it's, it's not there for you. Second down and five. We'll do our best to keep them honest as well on the field. On the ground, pitch to Donnie Lee, and he is stopped for a loss. Chad Moore hit him first, and Lee was able to stay on his feet. Maybe get back in the line of scrimmage. Good effort by Donnie Lee, the redshirt junior from Harvey, Louisiana. Try to run a little speed option to the left, but man, like you said, 38 came up, and uh, Chad Moore, a great play by Chad. He's actually best friends with Quentin Poling, who's a guy who we're going to talk about a lot, the middle linebacker, number 32. He's fourth in the conference in tackles. But he, Poling and, uh, and Moore, those guys, they play very well together. Here's third down and seven. See what kind of defensive play they come up with. They set up the screen to James Noble. He'll get across midfield, but he's nowhere near that first down marker. Brad Ellis came up from his cornerback spot to make the tackle. Really good job pursuit, pursuing the ball, pursuit to the ball by Ohio's uh, defensive secondary. I'm really surprised at how fast. I didn't know the Bobcats was this fast on defense. I mean, their, their pursuit is impressive so far. Joel Nixon is back to punt. Australian-style kicker. Poppy White is back deep inside his own 10. 
These Australian style kickers, Steve, I tell you what, I I'm just glad I'm not returning punts <laughs> nowadays. It's, it's... From the 40. Poppy's going to take a shot at it from the five. Makes a couple people miss right up the middle. What's up, Poppy White? Out to the 30 yard line. An excellent punt return. It's a return of 24 after the 42 yard punt. What's on the line? Well, it's that trophy and a heck of a week in the Bahamas. <laughs> exactly. Immediately following our game, we'll get you out to Boise for the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. Josh Allen will play in this one for the Cowboys. Wyoming takes on Central Michigan. Chippewas played in their fourth straight bowl game. You can also watch it streaming live on the ESPN app. Again, all eyes will be on Josh Allen. So they've got the quarterback, but uh, I said we've got the weather. We got the slight, <laughs> slight weather advantage. Nobody's wearing those outfits today to the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. Just a guess. I think we got the, the better end of the deal. I'm not complaining. No, sir. You might want to ask for next year's game right now. <laughs> I'm already putting my name <laughs> in the hat. First me? down and 10. Here's Ohio. After a brilliant opening drive, took six minutes off the clock, marched down the field for seven. Here's Nathan Roth on the option. Late pitch to Olette. And he'll run through some people across the 35 yard line out to the 37. Guys, A.J. Olet has been dealing with a left shoulder injury, hasn't played in quite some time. They've been doing a lot of resistance tests on the sideline. It's still bothering him a bit, so just something to watch for if he's not able to go 100% this game. He injured that shoulder on the third play of their last game, which was back on November 24th against Buffalo. So we'll watch for that. That's a concern coming to this game because A.J. is a guy who just runs with great pad level. He's going to use his shoulders to try to run over and run through would be tacklers, so you have to make sure to keep an eye on that. They didn't have Dorian Brown that game either, so now they get Dorian Brown's services, the guy who backs up A.J. Olette, too, who's actually another physical runner in this offense. Olette goes 5'9", 205. You don't, you don't often see those measurables. <laughs> that height with that weight, they don't often go together. Exactly. Just a real physical, strong runner. He's the workhorse of this offense. They fake it to him this time. Rourke's got plenty of time to throw. Zips one down the middle of the field. Wide open is Poppy White. Easiest touchdown he'll ever score. It's 56 yards. A scoring strike from Nathan Rourke to Poppy White. And the Bobcats are in business. And that's what the Bobcats offense, that's what they bring to the table. They're going to run, run, run. Then they're going to hit you with a play action because they're going to force you into a man-to-man -man situation. And once you have to go man-to-man, -man, they love those eyes, especially when they got number four, Poppy White, lined up wide. On for the extra point is Zervos. And that extra point is on the way. And it is no good. Louis Zervos misses the extra point. He missed one the entire regular season, and he misses that one there. You got to play against the run. Yes, sir. And when you protect against the run, <laughs> that leaves the pass open. They strike nothing. fast, too. Everything is beautiful in the Bahamas, certainly for Ohio. Outside of that little missed extra point, 13-0. Yeah. Hey, we were told the game was going to come down to Ohio running the ball and UAB stopping the run. Yes, sir. I stopped the pass, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they used the run to set up the pass. It was just a switch route. You have Poppy White right there and Cameron Odom. Poppy's going to come out and run a post. Odom's going to come up and then flat, go flat across the formation. I mean, flat across the defense. They could, they got confused in a second there. You're going to see Darius Williams point, point. Hey, who got him? Who got him? And at that point, it's a done deal. Poppy White, the deep post, just a really, really good throw, too, by Nathan Rourke. When you see a receiver does not have to break stride to catch the ball, that's an excellent throw by the quarterback, Nathan Rourke. And again, the missed extra point makes it 13 to nothing in favor of Ohio. And I know it's early, Des, but I, I get the sense UAB better get something on the scoreboard here soon before this game gets away from them. No, I agree with you, especially with the way that Ohio has uh, been playing offensively so far. Another short kick. Here's Andre Wilson on the return. It's a short return out to the 25-yard line. There is a flag down. We'll check the marker.
a little extracurricular activity going on out there. A little guy was blocking beyond the whistle. And... During the return, holding, receiving team number six. Ten yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. That'll push him back. The ESPN app is a fan's best friend. Stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live at home. We're on the go. You'll get access to stories, news, and highlights of the bowl games. Download the ESPN app to start streaming now. Bowl season is a great time to do just that. 13-0. We tell you Ohio has an explosive offense. They average nearly 40 points per game. Well ahead of that pace. There's still 3.33 to play here in quarter number one from the Bahamas. And on first and ten, A.J. Erdley to throw and sailed it over the head of his tight end, Logan Scott. Logan, Logan Scott had two white jerseys around him. I, I don't think that was a really good decision by Early to, to throw the ball to Scott. I think they need to, to run Early a little more, get him into the flow of the game, let him take a couple of shots because his passes so far have been off the mark. Erdley comes in with a streak of having thrown a touchdown in seven consecutive games. Second down and ten, he's going to throw again. Zips one across the middle, aiming to complete Andre Wilson, some fancy footwork. He's got the first down, and maybe that's just what the Blazers need. Yeah, they need, they need any positive play they can get right now, but I'm really surprised that the offensive coordinator, Les Koning, has come out throwing the ball so so often on first and second down because this is a team that's a very run-heavy oriented offense but i guess it's something about the bobcats defense that they think they can uh, take advantage of gain of 14 on that last play ball out at the 31. here's early to throw and complete again it's andre wilson making people miss he's got first down yardage and 11 yards on the play. Early, a little rhythm now for the yeah, Blazers offense. Exactly. Like, unless Kenning, not Tony, Kenning has uh, found something in that defense that he thinks he can take advantage of. UAB's offense coming out here just throwing the ball all over the field. What a surprise. He's going to throw again. They're not even play faking. Early. Down the middle to Spencer Brown. What makes the people miss? And Brown stays on his feet. The true freshman from Kimberly, Alabama, with a big play, and they're well across midfield. And here come the Blazers. Yes, sir, here come the Blazers. And you talked about Spencer Brown, he's a freshman. This kid gains 66% of his yards after contact, as you see right there. Very hard to bring down. He's a six foot, 235 pound running back, and a true freshman. 26 yards on that last play. Here's Erdley, the quarterback, will keep it. You want to talk about Brown and just how strong he is. We've got an example of that here in the weight room. He put up 600 pounds. This is a running back. A freshman running back. 600 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Do I dare ask what your your personal record was, Des? Uh, we didn't squat. <laughs> We did leg press. <laughs> Quick feet out to Donnie Lee. I will leave it at that. The yes, old leg press. Yes, sir. Uh, Spencer Brown is an interesting guy. Uh, one of the reasons that they were able to get him in the first place yeah. was he switched to running back late in his high school career. Right. No, he was a two-time uh, all-state defensive end in high school. And then when he came to camp, and they did good on good, meaning like the first string against the first string offense, first string defense, he was just running over players. And they said, hey, coach, uh, yeah, we want to we want to keep him on offense. Yeah, you're not getting him back on defense. You want to talk about a business decision. Yes, sir. Here's third down and eight. Early flush from the pocket. Trying to turn the corner. And he'll just sail it out of bounds and throw it away. And he'll take the big loss. Brings up a fourth down. Yeah, Spencer Brown, man, he was the, uh, the Conference USA freshman of the year. He has six games where he rushed for 100 or more yards and he's still just learning i mean he's a young pup out there i think the ceiling is pretty high with spencer brown it's gonna be a 37 yard field goal attempt for nick vogel out of the hold of jacob clark who is the coach's kid all the way and it's blocked the field goal is blocked Blocked by Will Evans in the middle of that Ohio defensive line. Nick Vogel, who has never had a kick blocked in college, has that kick blocked right there. 
keeping it 13 nothing. And the drive that started off with so much promise for the Blazers too, it ends with a block field goal attempt. Like Ken Berger, Will Evans, one of those two big men in the middle. Frank Solich, cool and calm. Guy's been coaching 50 years. He's yes, not going to get too excited about anything. No, he's an OG. He's, uh, you know, hey, I've seen block kicks before. We got a lot of football left to be played, guys. It so was, the uh, score remains 13-0. It's good spending some time with Frank yesterday in the coaches' meetings. Question. The ball at the 30-yard line. Here's Rourke off the play fake. He's dancing around back there and he'll airmail one to the sideline. And just throw that away and bring him a second down. Laura, talk to me. I'm talking to you, Steve. Uh, Shaq Jones, the leader on this UAB team and on their defense, telling his guys, hey, we didn't come here to do this. He said, we've got to get our priorities straight and get focused. You know, I would think the block kick is a, is a big blow. That was a chance to at least get on the scoreboard exactly. and slow the momentum a little bit of Ohio. Yeah. And now the Bobcats even have that working in their favor. No, I mean, I, that was deflating for them. I mean, you watch the demeanor on their sideline. Everyone's just dropped their heads. Their shoulders went down. Hey, guys, there's a lot of football left to be played. Maybe the final play of the first quarter. We'll see. Here's Dorian Brown and Anthony Rush. And Shaq Jones make the tackle in a big way. And that should be the end of quarter number one as the sun comes out here in Nassau. At Thomas Robinson Stadium, named after the Bahamas track and field star. A capacity of just over 15,000. I think we're going to come in under a bit under that today. Possible. Possible. 13 nothing. It's all Ohio after the first quarter. Big plays, missed extra point, and a blocked field goal. And we got three more quarters left to go. Well, UAB has said they really feel like they earned this experience here, and I think we can all agree they've more than earned it. Shaq Jones, who we've told you about his leadership so far in this game, it runs much deeper than just today. He's one of the 15 players that stuck around with this program since it was taken away in 2014. He's stuck with it. We're talking about, to put that in perspective, two years full of just practices, no games, workouts, no games as rewards. One of the reasons why Shaq said he thought it was important to stick around was because of his son, Jamari, who's seven years old now. He said his son identified with him being a UAB player, and he couldn't let him down. He wanted to make sure that he continued to live on that legacy that he had talked to his son, guys. Laura, well, thank you. As we open up quarter number two, it's third down and 16. We'll see if Shaq and that defense can come up with a big play. Ohio goes conservative with Dorian Brown, and they're nowhere near the first down market. Garrett Marino made the stop. Laura mentioned that Shaq Jones is one of the 15. Uh, here are all the players that stuck around. Des, I got to ask you. Yes, sir. Put yourself in that spot. That's a you're a college football player. You know you're not. You don't know if football's ever coming back. Right. And these guys, these 15 stuck around, and some of them, yeah. some of them definitely had other opportunities to play elsewhere. Oh, yeah, especially guys like Darius Williams. And Darius Williams, one of the best defensive backs in the nation. I mean, he told his coaches, look, I can't see myself playing for anyone else. I mean, that type of dedication and loyalty to your program and to your coaching staff is just unheard of nowadays for these young student athletes. And they started a clock once they realized they were getting football back. <laughs> Look at the days. Yeah, 600 days. Wow. But they wanted the guys to go to practice and see, hey, there is a finish line here. Yeah, yeah. We're playing towards this. Yep. 600 days, man. 600 days. I mean, that, that finish line is way, way down there, but it's there. And, so, and they said what they could sell. They could sell playing time, right? They had That's a lot true. of walk-ons. Exactly. They had, then they were practicing, and you could get your academics in order. That's right. So oh, that yeah. when football came back, you'd be ready to go and ready to play. Yeah, I mean, there, there were some benefits, but um, man, that's a tough decision for a young man to make to stay on the program. You don't know if it's coming back, and then you finally get the nod, and you know, hang in there with that coaching staff the way that these kids did, especially that special 15. That's just a real special group of players right there. And that really speaks to to Bill Clark. I mean, he. 
Bill Clark said he tried to talk some of the guys into leaving. Exactly. Like, he's trying to do the best for these kids possible. Because he turns into a, a high school coach at that point. Early was hit as he released, hits Colin Lisa. Lisa's one of those 15 guys who hung around and is being rewarded. But man, Early took a shot from Cody Grillo. And Early is a tough guy. He saw, him, he saw him coming right down the pipe, right down the middle, but he hung in there so he could deliver that ball. And that's what they're going to need. They, got to, they have to get something going offensively. Gain a nine on that last play. Quick throw out of the flat to Ronnie Turner. Evan Crouch made the stop. Like the last series, uh, the Blazers had the ball. It looked like they got to some sort of rhythm. Really surprised they came out throwing the ball so much, but obviously it's something that they see in the defense they can take advantage of. Second and four, Erdley looked to his left and throws to his right. Incomplete. Well, Xavier Ubosi was the intended target. Looked like good coverage on that play. No, really good coverage. Jamal Hudson. They're, they're, they're catching the Bobcats now in some man-to-man, -man, so I think that's why you know, they're going with so much of their, their, their passing offense as opposed to running the ball, which is third, what we're used to seeing. Third and four. I think it's an important play here. Try to stay on the field. Stay in the game. Yeah, they got to they keep their defense on the sideline. Get those guys some rest. Play fake to Donnie Lee and a quick throw on a slant inside. And it's knocked away. Broke it up. Looking to hook up with Justin Walker, and he could not bring it in. Fourth down. Okay. Justin Walker was coming across on the slant. Small, very small, tight window to try to fit it into. Just a little bit behind Walker. Still really surprised that they're there. And it's not like they're mixing it up. I mean, it's just pass, 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 not even play action, just drop back and throw the ball, which um, this is something we've seen a lot from uh, UAB this season. Joel Dixon back at his 30. Skies one in the air. A wild spin in the air and bounce and drops flat at about the 25-yard line. We'll step out. 12.41 to go here in the half. Bobcats up 13 up. The Bahamas Bowl, brought to you by Atlantis Paradise Island. Bahamas at heart. The Quicksilver card from Capital One. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back every purchase, everywhere. And Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Doesn't matter what the weather is, it's still Christmas time here in the Bahamas. <laughs> Who are we to judge, right? That's right, exactly. It's a good looking lid right there. This man's having a happy holiday season <laughs> so far. Yes, <laughs> he is. Out of the 25, Nathan Rourke will hand it off to Dorian Brown down the sideline. Dorian Brown, forget about it. You want to talk about explosive speed. It's 74 yards to what I like to call the house. Touchdown, Ohio. Steve, this office has an incredible one-two punch with Dorian Brown and A.J. Olette. You got Olette, who just softens up a defense, and you bring Brown into the game. One move, and he's off to the races. He has that home run hitter type speed. That's what makes this offense so versatile and dangerous. Extra point on the way. There is a flag down. We'll check the marker. Illegal substitution. 12 men on defense. Mm. Half the distance to the goal. We will try it. Really, the only thing that's gone wrong so far for Ohio is Louis Zervos missing an extra point. Which makes me think, why, why aren't they going for two? Okay. Yeah. Now, might have just been a bad try. He was 56 of 57 on the season. Right. So extra points have not been a problem until this point. And he'll split the uprights right there. Clean living. So Ohio has 207 total yards of offense and three touchdowns. But it's been the explosive big plays yeah. we didn't necessarily think we would see. No, we really did, especially look at UAB's defense. They, they normally don't give up so many big plays. You know, we're just midway through the second quarter, and um, Ohio offensively, they've just really exposed UAB's defense. 
you know, the secondary guys at the next level missing tackles. Uh, really good game plan by Frank Solich and Tim Alvin. The offensive coordinator. I mean, look, we, we've seen a lot of these runs, you know, watched a lot of football in the years. That, he wasn't touched. No. That was sideline no. at all. There's no one close to him. Not at all. And, you know, Dorian Brown, like I said, is a really good change of pace runner. You know, he's very physical, powerful, but obviously a lot faster, a lot shiftier than uh, A.J. Olette. And he brings another dimension to the offense when he's in the game. All right. The way B needs some kind of return here. And it's Andre Wilson from inside his five. Wilson able to get out to the 23-yard line. Coming up on Friday, December the 29th, we'll the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic for you from AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Jerry World, that's one week from today. Sam Darnold and number eight USC. They'll square off against JT Barrett of the fifth-ranked Buckeyes. It'll be exciting, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific right here on ESPN at the ESPN app. I know it's not a playoff game, but yeah. a lot of people are looking forward to that one as well. Oh, yeah, I am. I tell you what, it's like a pseudo uh, Rose Bowl matchup. Right. You know? Pac-12 Pac versus Big Ten matchup. You kidding me? I can't wait for that game. Old school. I'm excited to watch that one. Me too. One week from today, on the ground, Spencer Brown. And that's what you thought they would be doing more of. Yeah. You were surprised that UAB was going right exclusively to the air. And now, down by 20, they're running the football. This is true to who they are as a team and true to who they are as an offense. And the offense needs to complement the defense. You can't go out there and start throwing the ball around and then too many three and outs and then put your defense right back on the field because at some point, it's going to start to whirl your defense like we saw in that last play when Dorian Brown took it to the house. On the ground is Brown again. Picks up a few more, bring up a third down and short. Tony Park Porter made the stop. And you talk about keeping your defense on the field. These are unusual conditions for these two teams. Not yeah. used to playing in 80 degrees for, oh, you know, three-plus hours. That's true, too. <laughs> and this is something you really is hard to simulate when you're trying to prepare for it also. Third down and three. Quick throw, and it's dropped. Dropped by Andre Wilson. That would have been first down yardage. And could have kept this drive alive. Yeah, I think, you know, Andre seemed like he didn't have really good body control. The ball just got away from him at the very end. Uh, it's not like he took his eyes off of it. He was falling down and trying to make the catch at the same time. That was, that's what made it very difficult. Good, good throw, though, by Early. Offensively, they can't have to be more three and outs, though. They're keeping their defense on the field far too long. And the Ohio's offense, man, they're hitting on all cylinders right now. He nearly got through to block that. Joel Dixon able to get away. What a beautiful punt it is. A fair catch by Poppy Brown. And as if he forgot, he, he called for a fair catch. Yeah, I know exactly what that all about. Let's yeah. return that. A 49-yard punt. 20 to nothing, Ohio. Touchdown pass for Baker Mayfield. Jalen Hurts, he's gonna walk it in on play action. Kelly Burr, touchdown. It's Toby time in Athens, Georgia. New Year's Day should be something. Something special, my friend. I can't wait. I'm excited about that Looking one. Looking forward to that. Both of those heavyweight battles. Yes, sir. So Ohio takes over. They lead 20 to nothing. And they'll start out at their own 21-yard line. And that's their worst field position to start. So you can tell the kind of game they've had already. On first down and 10, here's Julian Ross. Trying to patiently pick a hole. No gain on the play. Anthony Rush made the stop. No Tico Powell in the game today for the Blazers. He's one of their key players up front on defense. Probably there's some passport issues. Yes, yeah. Hey, his passport if anybody time. knows, for regular guy, forget about being a football player. Right. There are passport issues. It takes a long time to straighten out some things. No you doubt about that. You can't get your passport the next day. <laughs> you can't come to the Bahamas. Express That's mail, for sure. not for <laughs> exactly. a passport. No, no, sir. Talking to both of these two teams, both programs had started the passport process back in the summer. Here's Rourke on the option. He'll keep it. 
And that one was interesting for UAB. Because they're starting the passport process this summer. Wait a second. Let's <laughs> get a football team back. Right. And you guys think you're going to be in the bowl? And the coaching staff told us they heard some whispers, like the equipment guys were hearing from players. They, what are we doing? Why are we asking for passports already? Right. But well, that showed their belief in this team. They had a lot of belief and a lot of faith in this team. They really did. Uh, both ways. The players had a lot of belief and faith in the coaches and vice versa. And that's why they're here today. It seems like defensively, though, Steve, they're starting to go with more of a bare front. They're covering all the offensive linemen. Got eight in the box to try to stop the run. This has been probably, this has been the most effective we've seen this defense so far this afternoon. Let's see third and ten. Throw across the middle is complete, but well short of the marker. Andrew Meyer made the catch. Darius Williams put a good lick on him. And we're going to see the rare punt by Ohio. That was a great defensive series for UAB. And now their offense should get the ball in pretty good field position. And at this point, the Blazers' offense needs all the help that they can get. Michael Farkas on for his second punt. His first one, he boomed at 55 yards. So Farkas is at his own 11. And he'll let it fly. Andre Wilson. Well, he signaled for a fair catch really early. Way too early. And the Blazers, you know, they need a spark. Special teams would be nice for them to chip in. Thought they had an opportunity. 48 yards on that punt. Kick off your NFL Sunday with the countdown crew at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. All the early breaking stories, injury updates, the preview each game right up until kickoff. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. That gets you into Sunday. And, of course, our Week 16 Monday night matchup as Derek Carr, Marshawn Lynch, and the Raiders taking on the NFC East leading Philadelphia Eagles. Monday night countdown kicks off our coverage at 6 p.m. Eastern from the link in Philadelphia. And you know the atmosphere will be off the charge there. Spencer Brown on the receiving end. There is a penalty flag. Might have been a late hit out of bounds. We'll check the marker. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds. Defense number two. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. I'll tell you what, A.J. Early came around and threw a nice little block, a little chip block, just to get, uh, just to spring Spencer Brown around the left side. Really good block by the quarterback. But yeah, late hit. Watch Early right here on this little chip block. Boom. Yup, just enough. Just enough to spring his running back, Spencer Brown. Hey, the Blazers will take it any way they can get it. Here's Early going to throw it down the middle of the field. It's caught. Caught at the 15. It's Ronnie Turner who spins down to the 10. By far the biggest play of the game for the Blazers and maybe just the spark they need. That's good for 37. Yeah, you're exactly right. That's the spark that they needed. Nice brown, nice run by Spencer Brown. They, right after the penalty, take a shot. Why not? Go down the field. Really good catch by Ronnie Turner going up, high point the ball. First trip inside the red zone out of the 12-yard line. And on first down, hand it off to Spencer Brown, right into the middle, the teeth of that defense, led by Chad Moore. Guys, just before this offensive series, A.J. Early going up to his offense saying, we're embarrassing ourselves on TV. We've got to pick it up right now. He said, I want to see better energy. We're better than this. Looks like maybe it worked. Wow. That direct impact immediately after those words. Here's Erdley on the run. Throwing and throwing it away. And to bring up a second down on the third and 11 to make a part. No, this group right here, Steve, they're 18th nationally in the red zone. I mean, they, they had 45 trips in the red zone and walked away with points on 41 attempts. 41 times on 45 attempts. 34 touchdowns, too, so 91% conversion rate for this group. They had a field goal opportunity earlier. It was blocked. It's third down and 11. They can get a first down. Here's Erdley. Throwing to his right now, looking left, middle of the end zone, and it's knocked away. Excellent coverage, Javon Hagan on Ronnie Turner to knock it away. Ronnie Turner was open initially, but as early was going through his progression, he came to Turner late, just late enough 
for Hagen to come and break up that pass. If he came just a, a second sooner, that would have been a touchdown for UAB. It's a 29-yard field goal attempt for Nick Vogel. Or watch for Will Evans in the middle of your screen. He's the one that blocked the last one. And we get a whistle. Full start. Offense number 66. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. That's a tough penalty in that spot. That really is. And they, they have to come away with some points off of this drive. So this can get out of hand quick. Vogel had it blocked from 47. They push him back five. This will be from 34 now. Field goal on the way. And he blasts it through. And I mean blasts it through. And you hear the roar from the crowd. <laughs> the Blazers are on the scoreboard. They're in the game. It's the little things in life, like three <laughs> points. Welcome back, everyone, to the Bahamas Bowl. As the Blazers are on the scoreboard with seven and a half to play here in the first half, it's 20 to three in favor of Ohio. It's pretty, pretty much been all Ohio up to this point. Good to see UAB get on the board, though. And we will see how the Bobcats respond. Nick Vogel will kick it away. From his own 35. And it's a short kick. And I mean short. The up back takes it at the 30 yard line. It's Mason Morgan, the tight end, who was the up back there. And so Ohio will start with excellent field position again. Take a look at some of the hot topics around college football brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. Of course, the early signing period that everybody's talking about. Yeah. George and Clemson, top classes so far. Florida Atlantic, Louisiana Tech, Temple, all winning big. We saw Florida Atlantic. Yes, we did. On the radio uh, side uh, of things. A lot of FAU. Yes, a lot. <laughs> yes, not so did. much accurate. No, not a no, lot no. of FAU. The college football national championship, the concert. It's yes. all set. Kendrick Lamar will headline the college football national championship highlight halftime show. We'll look forward to that. It should be great. Yeah. I'm excited about that. That's pretty cool. Off the play fake. And the throw able to complete to Poppy White. He's dropped the Bahamas Bowl logo, gains nine. Take that every time on first down. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. I mean, what Ohio did last year, they came out running the ball a lot. So UAB tried to make an adjustment. They put eight in the box, man to man. Really easy throw and catch for Poppy White and Nathan Moore. Olette is stopped. Quindarius, the guard makes the tackle his first stop big play there in the middle of the line and that's what you need from the Blazers defense I mean this group can be a very disruptive group I mean they rank 34th nationally in tackles for loss they average almost seven per game they need to keep doing that so they can keep Ohio's offense behind the chains third down and one Again, no play clock. The back judge keeping everyone honest. And Rourke on the option. Able to get the first down. The late option to A.J. Olette. And late is <laughs> Wow, that was a, he was almost on his knees when he pitched that ball to A.J. Olette. You see the Blazers defense in like a bare front. Every offensive lineman is covered. And that's why Howard is starting to go to that sprint option, either to the right or to the left, to affect the edges of that bare defensive front that the Blazers, Blazers have adjusted to so far in the second quarter. York was very nearly at his knee on the turf when he optioned that. He really did. I mean, that was pretty impressive. Handoff. Olet stopped by Anthony Rush. All 340 pounds of the nose tackle from Raleigh, North Carolina. Yes, Steve, I tell you what, David Reeves, Reeves, the defensive coordinator for the Blazers, he's made that adjustment, but he has to be careful in the back end because you don't want to put your secondary in too many 
man-to-man -man situations, especially with Poppy White, Poppy White and Nathan Rourke co connecting the way they have so far this afternoon. Second down and eight. Walk to throw. Able to complete. Andrew Meyer on the receiving end. Will Dawkins had the coverage. And Rourke had enough time to go to a second or third option there. No, you're right. He did. He went through his progression. And this is a really strong catch by Andrew Meyer, too, to reach up there and snag it with his hands with a defender draped on him. But that's the, 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 the situation that you put your secondary in when you start to go with the bare front, putting eight, eight guys in the box. Meyer missed the opener against Hampton, but has caught a pass in each of the remaining 11 games. He's having a good game here today. On first down and 10. It's Olette right into the middle of that defense. Nothing doing there. No, now he's trying to implement some run blitzes. Marshawn Diggs, number two, the safety, he came up and blitzed off the edge just to try to affect the rhythm of this Ohio Bobcats offense because right now they're doing anything they want to do to the Blazers' defense whenever they want to do it, whether it's run, pass, play action. And it feels to me like they're setting them up. They're sucking them in, and they're going to take a big shot here in the next play or two. We'll see. Yeah, like I said, Reeves, he's putting his guys out there on an island right now because they, they're... They're putting eight guys in the box. Second and 10 for the 39, off the play fake. York to throw, and able to complete to Poppy White. Down the sideline, making some people miss, and he is knocked out at the 23-yard line. Poppy White, we said he's an impact player at five foot nine, 168 pounds. He's the type of guy who can make you miss in the phone booth. Look at these moves right here on the sideline. I mean, he's, he's, he's exciting to watch when he has the ball in his hands. 14-yard gain on that play. UAB has taken a timeout. It's their first. Again, we should tell you, not only is the play clock not working here, the scoreboards are not working either. So the fans here that are in attendance are getting their cues either from the public address announcer or maybe they've got the ESPN app. Somehow they're Poss fault. Possibly. But otherwise, it'd yes. be hard for them to know the score, time, down a distance. Just a few basic things. So, yeah. <laughs> so we appreciate the fans that are in attendance here. Yes, we do. It's like an old time football game. It really is. Like, yeah, it really like is. leather helmets, old time <laughs> football. We got some latecomers asking, hey, hey, uh, what score? What's the score? <laughs> what quarter are we in? Exactly. How much How much have we missed? Now, Laura, Laura is down on the field. Laura, can you tell us uh, how often is the public address announcer keeping the fans informed? Yeah, you know, not that often, guys. Uh, and they actually have our ESPN broadcast in the scoreboard, so people are able to kind of keep up with us. So, I mean, you guys better smile big because <laughs> you're, you're on there. Also, I've had a few fans ask me what's going on in the game. I'm trying to keep them updated while obviously uh, doing my job, too. All right. Working through it for some college football. Nassau, the Bahamas. Olet, the receiver, out of the backfield. He's down at the 11-yard line. It's a gain of 14. 2.45 to go in the half. And Olet looks like he's banged up on the way out. We told you he injured his shoulder on the third play of the Buffalo game. That was back on November the 24th. And it certainly looked like he was favoring the shoulder. And there's an injured blazer down as well. It's the guard. The nose tackle. That was a concern coming to this game because he was already kind of banged up. Real physical runner with a shoulder injury. It was almost like a matter of time if he was going to re-injure that shoulder, Steve. And, uh, looks so, like he's on the sideline, a lot of pain, too. Both players on that play shaken up. Dorian Brown has checked into the game to relieve Olette. First down and 10. From the 12. And as Rook tried to snap it, let's see. Got to have a delay a game at some point in this game. Full start. Offense number 52, five-yard penalty, 
First down. That's the starting center, Jake Prees, on the fall start. Again, I mentioned delay a game because there's no play clock out there. Right. They're, they keep checking. They keep checking the back judge. Yeah, very for unique a situation here. Very unique situation. First and 15 after the market. Here's Rourke under some pressure trying to get out of there and shows good escapability and an obvious face mask. And he knows it right away. Garcia Williams clearly got him by the face mask and he knows right away. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't dispute it. Perfect <laughs> foul. Face mask, defense number 99. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic, first down. But he didn't, he didn't dispute it. He didn't take his hand off of it. He pretty much tackled him, tackled him by his face mask. And uh, I tell you what, Bill Clark is on the sideline and just in disbelief right now at how his team is playing, especially defense. You know, he's a defensive-minded coach, and yet I know he thought he'd get a better e effort out of his guys than what they've shown so far in the Bahamas Bowl. That's the third penalty by the Blazers. That's given an Ohio a first down in this game. And I believe all three penalties have been in the UAB red zone too, right? Second charge all three. Out of the half. It's a full media time. Minute 23 to go in the half. Ohio up 17, looking for more when we come back. I'm Adam Inver coming up in the Mercedes-Benz halftime report. Jesse Palmer and Joy Galley, what they're seeing from the Canadian Nathan Rourke so far in this game. Plus, we'll look ahead to what to expect from Wyoming quarterback Josh Allen, a young man who's receiving a lot of attention. Plus, we could say goodbye to an absolute legend in Dick Ember, one of my favorites, and I'm sure Steve Levy's as well. Levy's back to you. Adnan, thank you. See you and the fellas coming up at halftime. How Adnan, Joey, and Jesse didn't get down to the Bahamas. <laughs> the studio show on the road. That's, that's their mistake. That's, that's beyond me. That's a rookie, rookie, yeah. mistake, rookie mistake. And they're not rookies. I know, right? Serious veterans in that, yeah. in that group. Old men. Unbelievable. Minute 23 to go here in the half. Here's first and goal for Ohio, looking to add on to their 20 to 3 lead. Rourke gives it through to Dorian Brown, dragging some people across the goal line, and he's in for the touchdown. Dorian Brown for the nine-yard score, with A.J. Olet in the locker room getting his shoulder attended to. The Bobcats score again. And this is why they're one of the, the highest scoring offenses in the country, because once they get in the red zone, Steve, they don't walk away with field goals. They walk away with touchdowns. It all starts up front. We talked about a veteran offensive line, 106 starts combined with those five guys. And then Dorian Brown, his second touchdown of the afternoon. Man, you see why well, how why they're so effective in the red zone, why they score so many points per game. Almost 40 points. On his way, the extra point. Had missed one earlier. That's a nine play. 63-yard drive, take six more minutes off the clock. You're just, you're just gonna watch one group impose its will on another group, meaning Ohio's offensive line just imposing their will on the front seven of the Blazers. As you talked about the red zone, I, I think I shortchanged them before. So 15th in the nation in red zone offense, 92%, 80% touchdowns. Yeah. And that's third in the country. I think I said they were six. So what was interesting in our Ohio meetings to me, and you tell me you felt the same way, they still had not gotten over the losses to Akron and Buffalo. Like we asked about, I mean, there was 30 seconds of uncomfortable silence shaking their heads. Like yeah. those games really robbed them right. of what could have been a stellar season. Yeah, and you know, you, you talk to the coaches and you look in their eyes and you can tell that it, 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 it's, it still pained them to talk about those games. And uh, you know, they said that we're better than an, an eight-win team. And we want to go out there and show everyone that we're better than an eight-win team. And uh, you know, they they were very disappointed in the way that they played in those last two games against Akron and There's against Buffalo. Andre Wilson, who's been a real spark for the Blazers. 
Cutting it all the way across the field. It's a return of 45 yards on that kickoff. There's 65 seconds left here in the half. And UAB was forced to spend two timeouts on defense on that last drive. So that could really hurt them here. But yes, Ohio lost to Akron 37-34. And then at Buffalo, 31 to 24. And that still stings them. They thought they should be 10 and 2 going into the bowl instead 8 and 4. Of course, the benefit is you get the trip to Nassau in the Bahamas. Which ain't bad. Lots of time. Nice consolation prize. Yeah. Early on the receiving, able to hook up with his receiver, Ubosi, for the short game. But they need bigger chunks if they're going to go middle of the field, especially with just one timeout left. They're at midfield now. 45 seconds left. Here's second and five. Erdley sails it well over the head of his intended target, Colin Lisa. Yeah, Erdley's been off the mark a lot this first half, and now you're going up against a defense that they're only going to rush four. They're going to drop seven out coverage, so now the windows are becoming a little smaller, which forces the quarterback to be a little more accurate on his throws. So they're really putting Erdley in a bind right now with the way they're playing their pass coverage. His most accurate game, Erdley set a Conference USA completion percentage record. He was 20 of 21 for 95% in the game against Rice. But that has not been the case today. Spencer Brown, the carrier, 28 seconds left in the half. Laura. Yeah, Steve, just wanted to update you on the Ohio side. I was just told by the athletic trainer that A.J. Olette is done for the game. We will not see him again. Okay, Laura, thank you. And you wonder if some of that has to do with the score. Right. Having a comfortable lead, 27-3. Yes, sir. If it was a field goal game, maybe we'll let it be a little healthier. <laughs> yeah. But we can't guess that. Final seconds, and that'll do it. And the whistles blow. Zeros on the clock. Twenty-seven to three, the Bobcats of Ohio lead the Blazers of UAB. UAB will get the kickoff to start the second half. Now let's get you to Adnan Burke, Joey Galloway, and Jesse Palmer. It's the Mercedes-Benz halftime report. We'll see you in a few minutes back here in Paradise. Everything's better in the Bahamas. You're watching Capital One Bowl Media. Welcome back, everyone, to the Bahamas Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Week. The weather is spectacular. It's not going swimmingly, however, for the Blazers of UAB. Back with the former Heisman Trophy winner, Desmond Howard. I'm Steve Levy, Laura Rutledge. Shortly, we talked to Ohio and their coaching staff, and they maintain they were concerned. They're used to playing in 30 degrees right. and 7 p.m. kickoffs, <laughs> that the climate could impact them negatively. Yes. That has turned out to not be the case. Uh, so far, so good. Yeah. I mean, especially offensively. I mean, what they've been able to do offensively, I didn't see coming. Nathan Work has played just extraordinarily well in the first half, 8 for 11, 112 yards uh, through the air, two touchdowns, running the ball very well, three rushes for 30 yards, and then Dorian Brown, who they didn't have in the Buffalo game, Right. because he was injured fresh legs he's had a monster first half so offensively at this point the offensive coordinator Tim, Tim Albin has been able to do anything he's wanted to do to UAB's defense the only thing that's gone wrong really for Ohio they, they missed an extra point but other than that it's perfect now for today's storyline brought to you by Jared the Galleria of Jewelry Nathan Rourke uh, had a monster first half. Uh, you got to think, now, Oles not coming back. He went out with a shoulder injury, probably re-aggravated the injury he had um, suffered and sustained in the uh, Buffalo game. So now heavy low is going to go on the shoulders of their running back, Dorian Brown. And we'll see if they put any, uh, anybody else in try to give him a spell every now and then in the backfield. But Dorian Brown is a guy who's more than capable of carrying the load for the Bobcats. Every kickoff by Ohio has been short. Here's Demetrius Davis from the 10. Across the 20. He's taken on some people, and he's out to the 21. As mentioned, here's Laura Rutledge. 
Yeah, Steve, talking to UAB head coach Bill Clark, he said we came out trying to break some tendencies and really just threw the ball too much. We have to get back to our identity right here. He said it is paramount that they score as they get the ball to start the second half. Also, you guys mentioned it, A.J. Olette on the Ohio side of things will not return in this game because of the shoulder injury, but he did eclipse the 1,000 rushing yard mark. He got 1,006, and guys, as he was laying down there on the ground hurt, he was saying, did I get my yards? Very important to him. want to make sure he eclipsed that mark. You will see a lot of Dorian Brown, also the freshman Julian Ross, who they feel very confident with out there as well. Laura, thank you. Well, that, that's interesting, Des. You, you talked about it. You know, you can get too cute. You exactly. can outthink yourself. So they know the tendencies, right. and they want to get away from their tendencies. Exactly. They got away from their own game. They're trailing 27 to three. They really did. This is going to be an important drive for them right here, coming out of halftime. See if they can get back to who they are offensively. Throwing on the run and completing to Colin Lisa. Good job to come back to the football. They get out to the 30. There is a penalty marker down. There was a penalty on the return, and that negated the good return and forced him back. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 38. 15-yard penalty at the end of the run, first down. That's Chad Moore being a little over-aggressive. Took an extra shot at A.J. Erdley. They get 21 on the play, Dez, and tack on 15 on the penalty. And that was a no-brainer. I mean, the ball is left Erdley's hand probably at least a second and a half or two seconds before that hit. That was a, an easy call for the official to make. And uh, Early was a little slow getting up, you know. Not sure if he got all his Falcons. He looks like he's okay now, but uh, might be a little concerned on the Blazers' sideline. You got to keep an eye on number 11, make sure he's okay. Kylan, Kylan Bin is the backup quarterback. Tyler Johnston is the redshirt freshman. They are redshirting all season long. Here's Early now. Feeling some backside pressure, he'll just throw that one away. Second and 10. Again, great field position after the penalty, as opposed to coming out on first down, running the ball. You have an excellent running back. And there's freshman Spencer Brown. They go play action, and now it's second and 10. Behind the chains, which is exactly where they do not want to be. Ball out at the 45. That's Brown to the right of A.J. Erden, the junior from Cumming, Georgia. It's Brown, the ball carries across midfield. And that's the kind of power running game we were expecting to see all game. And that's exactly what they need to do on first down so they can have positive games, not be behind the chains, and then stay in more manageable down the distance situations for Les Keeney. Third down and four. Again, this is more manageable anyway. Brown, eight carries for 31 yards to this point. Play fake, early to throw, and complete. It's Ronnie Turner. He's got first down yardage. And Turner has dropped the 30-yard line, and that gets some enthusiasm going on that UAB sideline after the gain of 18. Hey, the game is it's two halves, and I know that Bill Clark and his staff went in halftime and told these guys, listen, hey, we have another half to go out there and show the college football world what we're about, what our program is about. Let's not let this opportunity slip by. Let's go out there and play Blazers football. Clark made it well known they were not just happy to be here. Did not want that point. He said a win today would give validation to the program and what they have come back from. So. Right. And we, and we know it's been a special season for the Blazers. There's no doubt about that. But, hey, they're not just happy to be here. Their mantra is let's make history. If they can come back from 27, uh, 27 to 3 in the second half, I think that would be an uh, incredible plane ride back home for the Blazers. Second down and nine. At the 30 of Ohio. Erd is going to take off and slide down at the 20. And has first down yard. Or let's see. We'll see where they mark the slide. I think he's going to be a little short. Pretty close, yep. Yeah. He slid feet first. And um, <laughs> he wants the mark to be where his feet were, not where the ball was. Yep. Pretty close. They're going to call it short, third down and one. Said Andre Wilson in motion, top of your screen. And he's going to throw, trying to throw to Wilson. Able to complete, 
inside the 10. And Des, I think that ball might have been deflected, and Wilson able to stay with it and make the clutch catch for first down. They dodged a bullet right there because that ball was deflected. It actually should have been picked off by number 21, Jalen Fox, who has two interceptions on the season. Wow, they dodged the bullet right there, but great concentration by the receiver to stick with the ball and catch it. It's a gain of 13 now, and it's first and goal from the nine. Hand off to Spencer Brown. Back to the line of scrimmage, second and goal. Will Evans made the stop. You know, we talked about Ohio and how effective they are in the red zone. Well, UAB, they're, they're pretty um, effective down there, too. So this is a team that walks away with touchdowns, 34 touchdowns out of 45 trips. And they really desperately need to walk away with a touchdown coming out of this drive and not a field goal. Miss this, this four down territory? Like a lot of time left, but I don't know. Woo -wee. Got a decision to make, right? At least it's a decision. No, you're right about that. On second down and goal. Erdley hit as he throws, and it's dropped. Ronnie Turner looked like he had it. Might have been a great defensive play. Chad Moore had the pressure. But watch, See if the defender got his hand in there. Watch early. Oh, no, he just dropped it. No, that was a drop. But early, he hung in there until the very last second just to deliver that ball and give him a chance to catch it. Uh, Brad, right in the bread basket. Brad Ellis had the coverage, but you're right. That's a drop. And it's third and goal. Might be four down territory. Interesting. No, you're right about it. That's an uh, uh, interesting decision they have to make. I'm thinking if I'm Coach Clark, I got, I got to take the points, though. Because if they, uh, this, they, don't, they don't get a touchdown here, it would be so deflated. In big trouble. He'll loft it back of the end zone. And it's out of bounds. Out of the back of the end zone. It was actually caught by Ronnie Turner, who goes 6-4, but not even close to the back line. So it is fourth and goal for the nine. Yeah, you got to take the points. That's what a high point the ball just didn't have enough real estate. Bill Clark, the head coach, with a decision, he's made his decision. He'll go conservative and he'll take the field goal attack. Here's Nick Vogel. This is from 25 yards away. He hit from 34 earlier and had one blocked from 47. And that field goal is on the way and it is good. Well, remember this point in the game. Yes. 10.46 to go in the third. Blazers had a field goal. Trail by 21. Star Wars fever has made its way to Nassau, the Bahamas. <laughs> it's everywhere. Yes, it is. Yes, I can't wait to see it. Planet wide. 27 to 6. Bobcats out in front of UAB. And the interesting play call from Bill Clark to kick the field goal in that spot. Still a ton of time left. Right. Here in the third quarter, trailing by three touchdowns. Now some of the, the onus will fall on the, the Blazers defense now. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, listen, they should be, you know, kind of fresh coming out of halftime now. They spent some time in the locker room. They had, a, had some time to regroup. Um, and if I'm Bill Clark, you know, going to put on fourth down, just, you know, the flip side, if we don't make it, you know, how it would probably deflate my team. Yep. So I wouldn't take that risk. Not, not this early. Not yet. Kyle Nelson from the two. Out across the 20 to the 23-yard line. Uh, another look at Nathan Ward. Steve, did a good job on the ground and throwing the football. Steve, he had an outstanding first half. Three rushes, 30 yards, but just, you know, playing well within the offense, taking what the defense gave him at, at times, and then hitting Poppy White for, some, for an explosive play down the field. I mean, he played just a, a fantastic first half, 8-4-11, 112 yards through the air, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Just pretty much a really flawless first half by Nathan Rourke. Two of his first three completions in the game went for touchdowns. How about that, huh? That's the way to start off your Bahamas Bowl. And some big plays. The 56-yard pass to Poppy White, you mentioned. Dorian Brown had the 70-yard, 74-yard run 
down the sideline. No such yardage there. Tevin Cruz saw to that. Now we're going to get a heavy dose of uh, Dorian Brown, who wasn't in their last game, missed the last game against Buffalo because he was injured. So, you know, he's pretty fresh, excited to come out here. And now with Olette out the game, he's going to have to shoulder the load for this rushing attack. Olette, one of the real leaders, one of the great scorers, a guy who walked on to earn his scholarship. And now it's Brown. Second and seven. York to throw. Deep down the sideline, it is caught. It's Poppy White. The UAB sideline says he was out of bounds. But White is smiling. And the official saying it's a catch good for 26. A little hand fighting going on right there. But before the game, we talked about White, his athleticism. He's only 5'9", but he's excellent at jumping up and high-pointing the ball like you saw right there on that play. White is over 100 yards receiving with four catches and the one touchdown. Here's Brown. Right into Anthony Rush. Brown has topped 100 yards twice this season on the ground. Had 142 against Toledo. Yeah. We averaged eight and a half yards per carry. I mean, hey, he's a strong runner, five foot eleven, two hundred eight pounds. You know, he doesn't mind coming downhill, slamming it up in there in between the tackles. But like we saw earlier on that explosive run, the seventy-five yard touchdown run, he also has some breakaway speed. Second and ten, just across midfield. So there's some confusion on the UAB defense here. And Rourke was hit as he throws. Whistles blow. Shaq Jones able to knock it down. It was like a little token fake by Rourke. He was trying to get the ball to Poppy White, but the defense got to his face so quickly. That was an errant throw. Another short throw. Yeah, who was by he Rourke? faking to exactly? <laughs> there was no running back there. It was like a token fake. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to fall for that trick. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the lineman said, we're not far for the banana in the tailpipe. <laughs> the old banana in the tailpipe. <laughs> On third and ten now. Here come the Creepers. Yeah, UAB. Crazy. Yeah, like they're going to try to bring a little pressure. Here it comes up the middle. It's picked up nicely. Rourke throws, and it's knocked away. Batted down on defense by Chris Wolbright, the junior from Brooklyn, New York. And it's fourth down. And a big stop, big hold by huge. UAB. Huge, huge possession by a uh, huge stop by the Blazers defense right there. Just what they needed too, man. Coming out of halftime, the offense marched the ball down the field. Came up a little short in the red zone. They got a field goal, not a touchdown. But then the defense, they came out here and they held this Bobcats offense without scoring any points. A really good possession for, for, for the defense of the of the Blazers. Farkas' is third punt. He's averaged 50 and a half on his first two. Cameron Odom will call for the fair catch. And okay, the Blazers will take over at the 14-yard line. Try to do something about that 21-point deficit. That the 2014-15 academic year will be our final year of competition. 18-year-olds in here, 17-year-olds. What are they supposed to do? Some of these guys came from 3,000 miles away to play here. To be I spent mornings on that track, 5 a.m., blood, sweat, and tears for this place, man. I I gosh, you don't understand. The raw emotions that were on display that dark, dark day in Birmingham, Alabama, when they Shut down the football program at the end of 2014. Here in 2017, they're in a bowl game. Simply an amazing response to coming back. A program that was reinstated. They raised more than $43 million to get the program back themselves, Laura. Yeah, and guys, when you think about just what everyone had to go through, it's incredible. They said there wasn't a dry eye in that room that day that they found out the program 
would be shut down. But all these players, to a man, when you talk to them, they say the reason they stayed and stuck around and believed in this was because of Bill Clark. Without him, they would not be here. They wouldn't have been able to believe. And guys, he could have taken other opportunities. He decided not to because he cared about building up what he came there to start. And uh, I, I think that's where you really point to the true epicenter of this story and the success of the program coming back. You know, Steve spoke about the raw emotion. When I look at that footage, the only thing that I can uh, compare that to, I think it's tantamount to someone walking into your home and telling you they're about to break up your family. Because when you have a team like that, players, they're like brothers. The coaches, they're like father figures to some people. So that's almost like someone coming to your house saying, okay, guess what? We're going to have to break up your family. That's why you saw such raw emotion in that footage right there. A.J. Erdley taking back-to-back -back big hits, first by Quentin Poling, and then by Trent Smart, and it forces them into a three and out and a fourth down situation. Erdley has missed on his last five attempts, Desmond. Yeah, he's just not in the rhythm, man, throwing, uh, offensively throwing the ball. And I tell you what, the Bobcats are getting some pressure on them, too. That may affect the way Early's throwing the ball also. They have to protect Early a little better than this. I mean, they got to get this offense going. Joel Dixon is standing at his goal line. Gets it in the air. And Poppy White from the 41. Rather big part, it's Kylan Nelson. Nelson inside the 30, all the way down inside the 25-yard line. Kylan Nelson, what a return by him. His first career kickoff return was back in 2014 when they last had the program. That went for an 84-yard touchdown. Wow. There's a 33-yard return. He's trying to make up for lost time. Yeah, <laughs> right. Central Michigan takes on Wyoming. That's coming up next, the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. And all eyes will be on Josh Allen playing in his final college game. Put it our pal Todd McShay. Allen grades out as the number three quarterback in the 2018 draft. Highly touted quarterback draft class. Of course, Rosen and Darnold's have, have some decisions to make. But you get a chance to watch Josh Allen and Wyoming coming up, and that will be a treat. On first down and 10, here's Dorian Brown. Off the big punt return. It's the big touchdown run. That sets up the latest score for the Bobcats. That's what happens in a game like this, Steve, when you, you give up a huge play to special teams. Then you have a, a, a big run, another one by Dorian Brown. You know, now you look at UAB sideline, they're, they're looking for answers right now. They don't know what's happened to them. Defensively, they can't stop the running game of the Bobcats. And offensively, they can't get anything going. Extra point is on the way, and it is good. Dorian Brown has become a story. Seven catches, seven, uh, seven rushes for 106 yards and three touchdowns. Amazing that A.J. Olette can leave the game, yeah. and you barely notice it. You barely feel it. Exactly. That's the depth. The Bobcats of Ohio, 34-6. The Bahamas Bowl, brought to you by the Islands of the Bahamas. Your island is calling. Downsizing, starring Matt Damon, now playing in theaters everywhere, rated R. And Target, expect more, pay less. They've got something good going on here, Des. Your first experience in the Bahamas Bowl, but yes. the three prior games have all been terrific. <laughs> yeah. The setting is obviously spectacular. Yes, People yeah. spend their life savings, right, to have one vacation to come to the Bahamas. <laughs> yep. And here are these two great football programs that get a free trip to the Bahamas. I know yeah. the fans, their supporters, and have followed the teams have certainly enjoyed themselves. Yeah, I was sold on, you know, being a great game. I was like, okay, Steve, I'll come down there, you know, <laughs> hang out with you, call the game. <laughs> you don't want to let the game get in the way of the vacation, <laughs> and then you remember uh, why we're here. Exactly, exactly. UAB should start remembering why they're here as they trail 34 to 6 with 7.45 left here in the third quarter. Again, Dorian Brown has just put on a show with A.J. Olette out of the game. 
Brown has taken it over. Yes, he has, and we know he has fresh legs because he missed the uh, the Buffalo game. But this guy is explosive. You know, very physical. Five foot eleven, two hundred and ten pounds. He'll run over you. He'll run around you, and he'll run away from you too. And now he's going to get uh, a lot of opportunities because oh, that's out the game. Averaging five, 15 yards per carry right now. Three touchdowns, 106 yards on just seven carries. That's ridiculous right now. Ridiculous. Got a shot of Olette on the sideline there with his pads off. Early seals one, sails one over the head of Colin Lisa. And now he's a spectator, like the rest of the folks in the stadium. Yeah. <laughs> Olette finishing with the pedestrian numbers. But again, in a, in, a, in a blowout kind of scenario, right. it's easy to take the rest of the afternoon off here. Oh, yeah. You know, he means, uh, you know, means so much to this team. You know, he's been such a leader for these guys. And they, they, they love his approach and, and how he, um, you know, how he goes about his business. Offensively, defensively, everyone loves Olette. Olette has a girlfriend that plays on the, the softball team and, and her teammates surprised her by giving her a plane ticket to the Bahamas. So there is Haley Adams. Again, she can thank her teammates. <laughs> and she now sees herself on the scoreboard That's here. That's pretty cool. And a great, <laughs> great job by her teammates. You know, her teammates are all watching. Uh, gave her the plane ticket to the Bahamas to see her boyfriend play. And, uh, a really neat story. It's, that's kind of what teams are all about, not necessarily football. Exactly. That's a nice holiday present. Softball team Plus, chipping yeah. in as well. Very nice. It's a great story. On third down and ten now. Erdley, who's gone cold, throwing the ball. Heats up a little bit to Andre Wilson. You can say he was out of bounds. You're going to call it incomplete. Wow. So Erdley now has missed officially on his last eight passing attempts. He, he surveyed the whole field on that throw, too. I mean, he was looking right, left. He came back to the right. I don't know. They may want to look at that again. It looked like he had his toes in, like he tried to do a little, little Antonio Brown, a little toe tap on the sideline. That's what Coach Clark is saying. Hey, yeah. maybe we can look at that again. We get a second look at that. Will help. Will help. Right. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they, they will take a look at it. I think they should. Previous play of an incomplete pass at the sideline is under review. And we are led to believe that the instant replay is working here in the building today. Yes, the it review. is. Yeah. From uh, that angle, it's, it's hard to see his heels. I mean, his toes look like they're... He's out. <laughs> so he's out? He's out of bounds. <laughs> Come on, man. It's like okay, that. okay, all right. <laughs> I, got keep, I got x-ray vision. Let's keep it moving, then. Let's keep it... <laughs> It, didn't, it did not appear to be close to me. I thought his heels were, were way out, and the yeah. call on the field is incomplete. Exactly, so not enough to overturn it. No Tony toe tap for him. Hey, you're All the right. one that left your glasses home, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to put your business out of the street, but Desmond's running around looking for a pair of specs. What are my cheaters? Exactly. <laughs> Let's see. Let me put these cheaters on to see if I, <laughs> if I see any, any green in between there. Uh, uh, I think it's, it's going to be really tough to overturn that. It's actually the left foot, too, because the, the left foot comes down before the right foot. And uh, yeah, I think I think they uh, need to run the punt, punt team out there on the field. Boy, what a nice... Uh, Nice trip this is, though. Great coming out here to haven't been a nice in a long time. Man. This is this is spectacular. You, the ruling on the field stands. It's an incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down. You're right, Steve. You're I had, right. I had it all the way, Dennis. You could have saved us a lot of time, man. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get to the pool before it closes. Jeez. <laughs> oh. All right. Run the punt team out there. The sun splashed field here at. Thomas Robinson Stadium, Nassau, the Bahamas. Poppy White is back to return the punt. Joel Dixon, kind of wearing Dixon out now from his 15. Poppy's going to let it bounce. And it will take a Blazers bounce 
and be dropped at the 33-yard line. New Year's Day will have the college football playoff semifinals for you here on ESPN. Number three, Georgia. Number two, Oklahoma will kick things off at the Rose Bowl. A game at uh, 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific from Pasadena. And then it's number four, Alabama. Number one, Clemson the All-State Sugar Bowl from the Superdome in New Orleans. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app. Ohio, look at the numbers. This season, 17 touchdown drives of three plays or less. I mean, think about that for a second. And they've done it three more times here today. They've had two one-play touchdown drives yeah. and another touchdown drive that went for three plays today. I mean, this group is not known as a, a quick strike type of uh, offense by any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, you give a, give a team a couple of weeks to prepare, wrinkles in. Toss in a few wrinkles here and there. Those are some things on defense you can take advantage of. And, wow, I mean, they are just explosive today. And I, you know, I've caused some Mac games. I've caused some of their games. And, man, I've never seen Ohio's offense look this dynamic and this explosive. Was not supposed to be the case against this UAB defense. Here's second down and eight. Six and a half to play, quarter number three. It's been all Bobcats, 34-6. Julian Ross in the backfield. And they're going to throw. Rourke's going to take a shot down the sideline. And a flag comes in. Poppy White, the intended target. Jordan Petty on the coverage. Defense number 10. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Garrison Mitchell there as well. That is Mitchell 10. And there's the pass interference. Yeah, that's just putting Mitchell in a bad situation. I mean, he's a star um, defender, meaning he's more of a, a hybrid safety linebacker type. He has no business out there one-on-one -on -one with Poppy White, the most dynamic player for the De Bobcats. Des Petty offense. actually comes up with the ball. That could have been an interception yeah, if I, not for the pass interference. Exactly. And had Garrison just turned around to make a play on the ball, then everything would have been all, it would have been all good. But since he never turned around to make a play on the ball, Easy uh, P.I. for the officials to call. Yeah, we're doing a great interception, you're right. That allows Ohio to move the ball out to midfield. Spotted exactly at the 50. Dorian Brown in the backfield, looking to add to his 100-yard total today. And Rourke wants to throw for some more. Flush from the pocket. There's a flag in the holding neighborhood. It's incomplete, we'll check the marker. Shaq Jones got some pressure. 10 yard penalty, first down. 60 is Austin Pleasants, who started the last six games of the season. And Ohio has been remarkably injury free on the offensive line. It's really been the same group the whole way, except for one injury at right tackle when Pleasants filled in that hole. I didn't see anything out of Pleasance there. No, it might have been Preeze. Might have been uh, Jake Preeze, the, the center. I think he had a, a hold of uh, a defender's jersey that he let go a little, maybe two seconds too late. Imagine the tight end might have gotten away with one there, too. Either way, it's first and 20. Ball pushed back to the 40 yard line. Zipped inside, and Cameron Odom could not hang on. Bronte Harris on the coverage. See Ohio's coming out throwing the ball this series. Uh, up 34 to 6. You would think that they will probably milk the clock, run the ball a little bit. First, first two, uh, first two downs, two passes. Where right we see, where have we seen that before? All <laughs> right. Jumping on the lane train Every time again. we get together, yeah. man. Every they might time. separate us, Des. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get a game a little closer. I'm just saying. <laughs> Come on, UAP. I want to come back to Bahamas. And, and Steve ain't giving up this gig. So. <laughs> come on, make him. And again, Rourke on the run and Rourke throwing. Anthony Meyer, terrific grab. Gain of 15 on the play. Will Dawkins had the coverage. Terrific grab and just an excellent throw. I mean, going to his left, rolling to his left, and then setting his feet and throwing just a strike. Incredible. Meyer has four catches for 33 yards. 
And Rourke has spread the ball around. But you're right, up with this big lead. I think they've been running the football a little bit since they've been so good at running the football. Yeah, I mean, they got this guy, Dorian Brown, back there who's averaging like 15 yards every time he carries the rock. He might want to put the ball in his hands. Here's Rourke throwing. Um, he slant to Meyer again. He has first down yardage. They really want to show everyone that they're better than an eight-win team. I mean, they're out here to prove a point. There is no doubt about that. Um, it was... They came into this game with a chip on their shoulders. We, we, we spoke to the coaches. It was obvious. It was evident. The way the season ended has stuck with them up to this point. And obviously, that message got to the players. And uh, man, what a performance so far by the Ohio Bobcats. And that makes it makes sense now why they're not just going to sit on the lead, just run the ball. They're still remaining aggressive offensively. A little trickeration, a little flea flicker now. And the throw able to complete to Troy Mangin, the tight end. And he is knocked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. So not only are they not running, yeah. they're not passing. Now they're going trickeration and flea flicker. As I just got through talking about this team remaining aggressive, they go flea flicker <laughs> when they really don't have to. Uh, wow. 24. Yeah. I think you hit it. I think they are still so bothered by those losses to Akron and Buffalo and, and what the rest of the country thinks about them. Right. They see themselves a 10-win team, and officially they're an 8-win team. Yes. And, uh, and they're going to go hard for number nine here today. No doubt. They want this to be the last impression that you have of the Ohio Bobcats football program. Up the middle. It's Dorian Brown on his feet, another touchdown. That's his fourth rushing touchdown for Dorian Brown today. Wow. The signature on this bowl game to Dorian Brown. Once again, in the red zone, we talked about it all day. This is what they do. They walk away with touchdowns, not field goals. They just lean on their offensive line. Combined 106 starts. This group plays extremely well together. Like you said a couple of plays ago, they've been very fortunate because they've been injury free up front, too. And the extra point splits the uprights. 14 yard touchdown. Brown is up to 120 yards. Des on eight carries. <laughs> eight carries. He said, okay, Olet, I got this. I got this. Like, look at that. Just running behind the, the big fellas up front, weaving in and out. Really good vision. Keeps his shoulder pass square to the line of scrimmage, so he's always moving forward, not trying to go east or west. And uh, I mean, but when you have that type of offensive line in front of you, you have a lot of confidence in, in, in going north and south as opposed to trying to go around the edge and Take it east to west, man. What a great game for Dorian Brown, who missed the last game against Buffalo. Welcome, welcome back to the Bobcats offense, Dorian. Jamari Bogan used to have the record for Western Michigan, and now he's got company. Dorian Brown, the fifth-year senior out of Pittsburgh, has his fourth touchdown of the game. So impressive in every way. And really cool to be a senior and to yeah. go out. A bowl memory that you will never forget. Here's Andre Wilson. He's done a nice job in the return game for the Blazers. And he stumbles out to the 23-yard line. 41-6. It's been all Bobcats here. Four minutes to play in the third. See what the Blazers have left in the tank on offense. A.J. Erdley has just been off the mark too many times. And again, as, as Laura detailed coming out of the locker room at halftime, the offensive strategy was yeah. to pass instead of run first. Try to catch Ohio off guard. That was not the case. And they come out throwing here, as you would expect. Andre Wilson on the receiving end. It's going to move the chains one way or the other. I don't know if he got first down yardage, but it knocked the chain, knocked the first down marker over anyway. It's going to be second and short. Yeah, well, the Ohio Bobcats have, have done a fantastic job of um, forcing UAB's hand offensively now. Now they have to throw the ball. 
And this isn't a team that's really comfortable being in a position where they need to throw the ball as much as they're going to have to to try to come back in this ball game. Brown got the first down. Think about the, uh, I guess, the three-day span, Des for Ohio. They're in the blowout lead here, 41-6. Just two days ago, they signed 20 kids. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right about I mean, that. Early, yeah. early signing period, they signed 20 kids on the first day. And I know they were very excited about their recruiting class. Oh, yes, uh, Frank Solich was beaming about that recruiting class, signing those 20 kids. Andre Wilson on the return there, on the reception. Chad Moore makes the stop. He said it's a good thing we had the international calling program. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Because those, those data and roaming charges, Des, your cell phone, that'll kill you, man. Oh, yeah, man. I only use Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> I only use Wi-Fi. That's it. And you get some mixed answers when you say, hey, are you in favor of early signing or not? This new early signing period. Yeah, Any do. thoughts on that? Oh man, I, you know, seems to have pluses and minuses. Yeah, it really does. I think that um, I, I'm a, I'm okay with this just staying the way it was. I don't, I don't care too much about the early signing period because I mean, kids, they're gonna do what they want to do anyway. You know what I mean? They're guys who are just holding off right now. They're not, you know, making the commitment. Then you have guys roughing the passion ball. He's gotten beaten up back there today. He's probably going to take more hits, as you said. The whole world knows they got to pass the football down 41 6. Yes, and they can pin their ears back now and just come after the quarterback. But yes, with the early sign of Pierce, I don't know. I'm kind of lukewarm on that right now. How about you? How do you feel about that? Yeah, it seems to be a lot of mixed reactions to that. Uh, some kids want to wait until February. Right, right. Of course, these coaching staffs, they want to lock up these guys. <laughs> exactly. And, and move on and get on with the next phase of business. No, I, I get that. Believe me, I get it. Mm. On first down and 10, Spencer Brown. And of course, the whole recruiting and signing period has changed since your day. Now everybody wants to, you know, have seven hats out there. Oh, yeah. Make family videos. Exactly. It's it, all... it become a big production now. That's that's the that's the key word. It's a production now. <laughs> and, and the thing to me is, you know, all right, the five-star guys, they want to go that route. Right. It's like right. two-star guys now, yeah, one-star yeah. guys. Calm down. Pump right. the brakes. Right. <laughs> And, and we're happy that you're getting your first choice, but yeah. do we have to put the other six schools that didn't get you? We got to put them out there. Exactly. That's a good point. That's a that's a great point. Well, they yeah. recruiting the effort these assistant coaches do in recruiting. Early hit as he throws, and that will fall harmlessly away, incomplete. And Kevin Robbins got a hand on it. Yeah, they put a lot of uh, a lot of time and effort to this recruiting thing. It's huge. So big. You got the college football fans, the chat rooms, the message boards. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, there are people who are just solely into the recruiting of these high school players. It's, 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 like, it's like a business all to itself. Exactly. It's taking on a life of its own. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. Here's third down and nine. Out of control. You had 45 offers, I'm sure, though. Yeah, but I wasn't doing like a Cirque du Soleil <laughs> production to announce I was going to Michigan. <laughs> There's a flag down. That pass is intercepted. Picked off by Javon Hagen. Again, there is a marker down as Hagen cuts it back to the 40-yard line. If it stands, it's the first turnover of the game. I think the uh, flag is on the defense. The way he was returning that ball, he looked like he was guilty of something. Holding. Defense number two. Yeah. Ten-yard penalty, automatic, first down. He, he returned that ball half-heartedly because he knew he was guilty of something. It was the holding penalty right here. See right here on the right side of your screen coming right here. Oh, that's why you see the deep defensive back was pretty much tossed to the ground. And that's why he uh, got the INT. <laughs> hey, what's amazing to me is that Ohio has 41 without the benefit of a turnover. Right? You get 41 yeah, that's true. in the first three quarters. Exactly. You, you had some kind of turnover help, and that yeah. has not been the case. Now, this has been all domination offensively. That's what it's been. Final minute of quarter number three. I mean, we had a big punt return, but it wasn't for a touchdown. Early to throw. Able to hook up with Donnie Lee coming out of the backfield. Not much doing there. Bring up a second down. And the clock winds. Get no play clock on your screen. That's because there is no play clock in the stadium. 
We were told uh, that one of the play clocks was working, but in fairness to both teams, right. they turned that one off. And the play clock that time is being held, administered on the field. And the quarterback is being uh, no giving notice by the official. And the back judge telling everybody else. Nine seconds left now in this third quarter. And that will do it. Conference USA, they lead the MAC two to one here in the Bahamas Bowl. But today, the MAC again trying to have their way and even the score in the four Bahama Bowl. Watch out for that ball. Players and coaches from UAB in Ohio, along with coaches from USA Football, they held a fun youth football clinic for boys and girls on Wednesday afternoon at the practice field near the stadium here. Football skills were taught. Hey, some good oh, right there. How there about that go. spike? Yeah. It was like Gronkowski spike for a second. <laughs> exactly. Lots of smiling, lots of encouragement. Good time had by all. Each child receiving a T-shirt and a ticket to today's game. A lot goes into the bowl experience, Des. So much yes. more than just the, the football game itself. Right, a lot of things going on that people don't, aren't aware of. That's pretty cool. That's a cool experience for the kids and for the community, too. So it's great that they did that for the Bahamas, uh, the people in the Bahamas. It, and it seems like, it, having been here at all four Bahamas Bowls, I can tell you, there seems to be more interest in football, American United States style football right. here in the Bahamas. They seem to be getting more interested and Laura understanding the intricacies of the game as well. Exactly, Steve. And it's interesting because UAB was at Bill Clark actually talking about having a camp here in the future to see about recruiting some guys to their program for the Bahamas. He said he's looking down here on the track here and practice on this field and saw some track players. He said, I think I could teach them how to play football, get some speed there at UAB, even more speed. And, you know, guys, what do you think about that? Getting some Bahamian players over to the States and doing some camps over here. Um, I'm all for it. <laughs> Uh, put it, me in, Coach. It, I know that play. If it includes a, tr a trip down here for you, I exactly. see. Exactly. I'm all for it now. I, I would love to be a part of that. I thought the, the camp that they had, you know, showing the kids just the different skills, I would love to do something like that. Thank UAB you. turning it over on downs there. You know, uh, early has been, well, that, that's just a drop. He yeah, we, we can't put that yeah, on the yeah, quarterback. Yeah, no, no. Andre has to make that catch. Erdley's had his own, plenty of misses himself, but not right. that one. That was yeah. right there for Andre Wilson. In a situation like this, under these circumstances, you have to make plays like that to, to not only give your, your, your quarterback confidence, but to give the offense confidence. Get, get something going. I mean, listen, 41-6, to six, you have the whole fourth quarter. Don't just throw in the towel. Still go out there and represent yourself and represent your program the right way. That's for UAB. For Ohio, they do have their second string in there. That's Quinton Maxwell now at quarterback. Maxwell, number seven, running around back there. Spins out of one tackle and out of another one. Quinton Maxwell says, I'm here to play the game too. And bounces down. We'll give him a gain of four. That's a lot of running for a gain of four. <laughs> You're not kidding. If he was bouncing by Bounce around back there like a ping pong. Look at him. He broke two tackles, three tackles right there. Another would be four or five. Oh, man. He took a big shot at the end of that run. Maxwell goes 6'3", 224 pounds. A redshirt sophomore out of Rayville, Missouri. After taking that last hit, now he's in the game. Still got Dorian Brown in there, too. So not all the starters have come out. Here is Brown trying to pick and choose. He's still running effectively and hard as well. He's got first down yardage. But he's just a load to bring down. Just a tough runner, very physical. You know, he runs well behind his pass. Look how low he gets right there. Keeps his legs moving, just breaking tackles, running through guys. It is a treat to watch Dorian Brown run the football. How was his pad level there? Was his pad level good? Excellent, excellent. <laughs> first down 10. Out of the 36. Maxwell to throw for the first time. And complete. Able to hook up with Andrew Meyer. He was able to shake a first tackler and advance on for first down yardage. Now, Maxwell has a pretty strong arm, too. He played by about six games, started about you know, six games last year. He was a guy, like I said, six foot three, 224, strong arm. 
accurate. He brings a lot to this offense, too. Now, I don't see a you know a huge drop on him just because Nathan Rourke isn't in the game. I think uh, Quentin Maxwell is going to be pretty fun to watch this fourth quarter. Always a good play to hit it off to Dorian Brown. Another big game for Brown. And another first down. 17 yards there, and Brown's running. And he's, his cutbacks have been exceptional. Yeah, look at this, just a zone read right there. He bends all the way to the backside of the play, and it comes around here, like you said, exceptional vision, really good balance. And Maxwell did a good job of just staring down the defensive end because that's a zone read play for him. And he had the defensive end collapsed down hard, and he would have kept it and tried to go around the end. Dorian Brown now, 10 carries for 151 yards. He's been the story of the game, and there are many stories for the Bobcats. Why not keep feeding him? Anthony Rush makes this first stop, and again, Brown stays on it. Fumbles the football now, and Ohio able to recover. So there was the first blemish for Dorian Brown, and even when it's a mistake, even when it's a fumble, they still recover. That was Connor Brown who fell on the football. I know, but look at the second, third, and fourth effort by Dorian Brown right here. Just putting the hand down to get more yards, and uh, but you got you got to secure that ball, Dorian. You got to keep it tight, tuck tight to the body. Clock winding, 11 and a half to play here in the game. Second down and five, 41 to six. Ohio leading UAB in the fourth annual Bahamas Bowl. Here's Maxwell. And he'll just sell that one and throw it away. We know he's a bright guy. He's a fourth generation Eagle Scout, Des. Oh, okay. He finished with a top five GPA in his graduating class. So he's got the smarts. Yeah, really, really intelligent football player. High football IQ. Uh, like I said, a strong arm. No, and, and one of the great attributes of a quarterback being smart is no one to throw it away. Exactly. That goes without say. Live to fight another down. Yeah. You'd be surprised at how many quarterbacks take sacks when they shouldn't take a sack. Well, worse. Yeah. Go to the yeah. traffic. <laughs> Start chasing people down the other way. Exactly. Here's it's third and five. It's good for the RPOs, too. Really good reading the defenses, understanding how to get the offense in and out of situations. Option that time. It's Brown. Dorian Brown's always a good option. Out of bounds at about the 30. Give him the 29-yard line. And now the Bobcats are starting to just, you know, eat, let the clock tick, keep it on the ground, milk the clock. It's fourth down also here. We let the sideline and see what are we going to do? Pooch punt. Fourth down and three. Field goal. Attempt. Let's see if they're going to run down the play clock here. Watch for the back judge, Jim Seema. He's supposed to be telling everyone. Right, exactly. The play clock is not working here in the building. Ohio oh, takes a first charge time out of the half. That was Jim Seema. Ten and a half to go in the fourth. All Ohio. OH. Ohio. New Year's Day is going to be extra special this year. Not just with it, you know, get off to the year off to a great start, do so with outstanding college football matchups. Gonna be a special New Year's Day. I agree. I can't wait. I'm excited about where this. Where are you gonna be? Where, where are you gonna be positioned? I'll be at Pasadena, man. Yeah, but I, you know, I'm looking forward to that Clemson Alabama game, too. I mean, both games should be exceptional, epic matchups. Here's fourth down and three out of the timeout. And Maxwell to throw, and it's off the hands of D.J. Knock, who brought in a touchdown pass, which seems like an eternity ago. <laughs> I was about to say, we haven't said his name since that touchdown to, to start the game at D.J. D, I mean, D.L. Knock. Down to Laura Rutledge on the field. 
Well, guys, one of the great things about the Atlantis here in the Bahamas and what these players get to experience is the water slides. And I know you two frequent the water slides yourselves, but uh, Quentin Poling was telling me that his buddy, his best friend Chad Moore, had a unique experience. He said, Chad, he's kind of a risk taker. And the person attending the slide said, hey, man, if you really push yourself as you're about to take off, it'll be a way better experience. So Chad said, yeah, 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 I'm going to do it. And he launched himself and in the process launched himself into the top of the covered slide and slid down with his face on the top oh. the entire <laughs> way down. He gets back to the room and he's like, dude, I'm done with the slides, no more. He said it was worse than anything that's ever happened to him on the field. I checked out his face earlier, though. Looks great, so I, I don't know. I, I think he survived whatever it was. I, I thought slide burn might be really brutal to explain when you get back home to Ohio. You know, I'm impressed he told you the story that he admitted to that. I mean, a lot of guys wouldn't come clean on that kind of story. Good that for him. Do. Yeah. Oh, wide open target for A.J. Erdley. It's Colin Lisa who has been one of his go-to guys here today. Game of 23 on the play. Yeah, really good throw, too, by Earl, Earl, by early too. Just right into the seam route, like we used to call it a bang eight, skinny post, right up the side, right up the hash, a little outside the hash, between the hash and numbers. Real good throw, though, by early. On first down and 10. And really now, the Blazers are trying to make this score more respectable and leave the Bahamas with a better taste in their mouth. Andre Wilson on the receiving end. As we have something here that we haven't seen all week, that's clouds. Yeah, it's true. It's getting a little breezy. There was a 15% chance of rain here today. Yeah, we didn't pay attention. We'll let you know if we yeah. see any raindrops. Yeah, 15. We're good. <laughs> under, yeah. under nine minutes to play in the fourth. Here's Spencer Brown. To the 40, maybe the 39. There's a look at the stadium. And the weather conditions. Got the clouds when they when they do appear, they only last a couple seconds. That's get, it. That's all. Get back to 80 and perfect. Exactly. Absolutely. Third down at six. Tell you what, how about the job by uh Jimmy Burrow and then uh Bobcast defense today too? They played an outstanding game. I mean, obviously, we would talk about the offense and Dorian Brown and what they've been able to do. But I got to give a lot of credit to this defense. That ball comes out. Speaking of that defense, Ubosi made the grab, and let's see who recovered the fumble. And they're going to say it was recovered by Justice Powers, the right tackle. Excellent job by... By Hagen, number two, the safety coming up there and just stripping the ball, just ripping it out. Something we talked about with the coaches too, about turnovers. They wanted to create some turnovers in today's game. Not that they necessarily needed them for uh, for the win, but it's always uh, something that you want to focus on going to a bowl game. Fourth and five, obviously going for it, and it's knocked away. Is that Hagen again? It it's is. Hagen again. Javon Hagen is a guy who chose the Bobcats over eight other Division I teams. Cincy, Miami, Ole Miss all wanted a piece of him. And Hagen chose Ohio. And they are thrilled to have the redshirt sophomore out of Jacksonville. Second on the team in tackles, breaking up back-to-back -back passes. The Bahamas Bowl. Brought to you by Atlantis Paradise Island, Bahamas at Heart, and the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase, every day. What's in your wallet? Players from both teams had a chance to enjoy a shallow water dolphin interaction at the Atlantis Dolphin Key on Tuesday. Got a close-up look at those beautiful, playful Atlantic bottlenose dolphins. The Atlantis has one of the world's largest marine habitats. Hey, the Atlantis is uh, first rate, grade A in every way. Very true. You get a chance to get a, take some time, family vacation, boys trip, girls trip, really any trip. Exactly. The Atlantis, they've got something for everybody. I second that. Special place. Yes, it is. Might hang around an extra couple weeks, see if anyone notices. Here's Julian Ross. Rumbling down to the 41 yard line. It almost doesn't matter who Ohio gives the football to. 
No, you're right about that because the offensive line, they're so dominant right there. Look at that huge hole they created for Young Ross, too. I mean, they've been doing an outstanding job all afternoon. Like, I give a lot of love to the Bobcats offensive line. This, this group has been playing tremendous today. There's 242 yards rushing yeah. on the ground. And they have so much depth at that position. At the running back spot with Olette leaving early with a shoulder injury. Here's Ross again, down to the 35. We talked to Tim Alvin, and all the coaches talked about it. It all starts with their offensive line. Exactly. But they got down to Jalen Fox and David Burroughs, a couple of walk-ons, and they were playing in the final series in that game against Buffalo, the loss against Buffalo. That's, that's how much their depth was tested with injuries at the position. And they were still in that game because of the offensive line. I mean, you got Joe Lowry, he's a four-year starter. Joe Anderson, a three-year starter. Jake Preeze, another three-year starter. He just went out of the line. These guys play extremely well as a unit, too. Option to Julian Ross. He swung around by Broderick Thomas and out of bounds. Bring up third down. First of all, you don't want to go to the outside because that takes you away from the strength of your offense, which we just got through talking about, the offensive line. Second of all, Fox. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Go to the outside like that, guy yes. runs out of bounds. I'm not sure that the players are as concerned with getting back to the pool as you are. In fact, <laughs> the players might be going straight to the airport. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, I know they're not in a hurry to get on that plane and head back to no, Athens. That's a good point, yeah. fair. Yeah. Island time, more island time. Exactly. Third down and three. Late option by Maxwell. That ball comes loose, and Ross will pick it up eventually. But Maxwell paid the price for the late option there. Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. And uh, man, he's lucky that uh, Ross was able to to come up with the with the ball. Uh, that was a, a bad pitch because of that big hit. And nothing against Athens, though. I mean, I've been there. Great, great town, but it's not Atlantis. No. Not, so, just saying. Just saying. About Frank, though, Frank has done a fantastic job. Coach Solich. I asked him how old he is. You know, I was really off the record. I'm like, Coach, we, we can look that up. <laughs> we Googled Frank. He's like, let's Google. <laughs> He's 73 years old. And he said he can still relate to the young players. Yep. yep. Still has the energy that is required of that job. Exactly. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And they are humming along today. What a bowl game for the Bobcats. I'm Adnan Burke back in our college football studios reminding you that currently ranked number six of Mel Kuyper's big board, the third highest quarterback. That's Wyoming's Josh Allen. He will start today versus Central Michigan. That is the second game of our doubleheader today on ESPN. It's coming up at the top of the hour. Now back to Steve and Des. Adnan, thank you. Hoping that's a little more competitive on the scoreboard <laughs> than what we have seen here today. Hope so. In the Bahamas. On the move, Erdley, the quarterback, he's taking hits all afternoon. He, he will feel the effects of this game on that flight home. Oh, yeah. The fact yeah. trailing a 41 to 6 will make it hurt even more. 4-12 to go here in the fourth quarter. Oh, it always hurts a little more when you lose, especially if you lose 41 to 6. Any, any margin that large. On second down and five. Here's James Noble, the ball carrier. He's got first down yard. It's a little bit of a spark. And you want to talk about gang tackling. That's a good example of it right there. Now take a look at the Bowl Challenge Cup brought to you by Progressive. See the number of championships won per conference since 2002. Uh, where Conference USA and the MAC rank with the Mountain West on top. Again, I think I mentioned it earlier. The Conference USA, they lead the MAC 2-1 to one in the Bahamas Bowl. The three previous games played so far. But I'd say I, I like the chance of the MAC evening things up here today. I'm with you. With three minutes left. <laughs> Early on the run. 
He's still lowering his shoulder and taking people on. Yeah, he, he actually delivered the, the punishment on that on that run right there. With his shoulder down and tried to truck him. It's a gain of 12 on that last play and now an injury. That's the player that um, that early ran uh, ran into on that tackle. And, uh, he's London Miller is being helped off the field. We'll step out. 2:40 to play. The afternoon, the players took to the beach in front of the Atlantis for a dinner, some fun games, and a a fierce fierce dance competition. Even the coaches got into the action, pulling off the surprise of the day. Ohio wide receivers coach <laughs> Wayne Dixon <laughs> Turn, took home the trophy. And congratulations to Dwayne Dixon. And there's Dwayne on the sideline. They might be doing some dancing on the way home tonight. I Dwayne so. Dixon, who once caught three touchdown passes from Bob Huco in the Blue Bonnet Bowl for Florida way back when. Uh, excellent wide receiver in his own right coaching up these wide receivers now. Here's James Noble with the ball carry. Two and a half to play in the fourth quarter now. And listen, so look, UAB. Yes, sir. What's up? It's a it's a brilliant season, right? No matter yeah. what happened today, very true. Getting to a bowl game will complete what has has to be a dream season for Coach Bill Clark and his squad. Bottom line, no football last year, no right. football program to they're in the Bahamas playing in a bowl game off an exceptional season that saw them go 8-4, setting school records, eight FBS wins. They won six in Conference USA. They were a perfect 6-0 at home. Yeah. Yep. And here they are today. Look, they didn't want to they didn't want to get the doors blown off no, in the they bowl did. game. They did. But still the season will be remembered as a mighty success. Yeah, absolutely correct. And then Coach Clark, I mean, several National Coach of the Year honors for him and um, just a tremendous job of bringing this program back to respectability. Um, obviously they didn't want this to be their final game, but you look at their season as a whole, just a, a tremendous year for the Blazers. Final 90 seconds and the throw down the sideline. Beautiful touch on that pass caught by Hayden Pittman. It's a gain of 21. There's no quitting this team. They're, they're going to fight to the, the last whistle. Early was on the money there. Until there's no more time on the clock. UAB has never won a bowl game. In fact, they've only been to one prior. The Blazers lost to Hawaii 59 to 40 in the 2004 Sheridan Hawaii Bowl. And so that, that'll be the next big goal for them, not just to get to a bowl game, but to be victorious right. in a bowl game. Following the game, make sure you tune in to ESPN3 for the post-game trophy ceremony presented by Capital One. Final minute to play here in Nassau, the Bahamas. And despite the outcome of this game, the season in and of itself is something special to build off of. So I think they're going to build from this, the 2017 season and uh, just move forward. Really good coaching staff, great kids, a lot to look forward to in the future. Our Capital One player of the game, this should come as no surprise. It's Dorian Brown. He had 152 yards rushing on 12 carries. Wow. 12 <laughs> carries and four touchdowns tying a Bahamas ball record. And he sees himself up on the big scoreboard. And I think he's pretty pleased with what he sees. And, he, as he should be. He is the Capital One player of the game in a no doubt about it landslide. That's a really incredible special performance by that young man. Final play. Three seconds left. Why not take a shot early? It bounces up in the air. It is caught by Ubosi, and he will be dropped at the four-yard line, and that's how and where this game will come to an end. The Bobcats of Ohio will finish an impressive season at 9-4. and four. I know they're still bothered by those late losses to Akron and Buffalo. But this will help ease some of that pain going into the offseason. No doubt about it. No doubt about it.
Good for Ohio, man. Really, really good season. Didn't end the way they wanted to, but it ended today the way they hoped. And, uh, I think it was a good showing for their program and for Coach Solich and uh, his, his young men. And really good for the Bobcats. Congratulations to Ohio. Still a feel-good store, UAB. Doesn't feel that good right now. It'll feel better when they get home and look back. Send it back to the studio. Adnan, Joey, Jesse, take it away. Happy holidays, everybody.